Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. DTB 59 complete auto detailing and more. And today, y'all know, you know, it's the holiday weekend, okay? And I, I get a little excited, especially when I have family members that come in, okay? So, yeah, I got my nephew that's in here right hey, now, hey, okay? Hey, this is my on? nephew, Romel. Hey. And this is his wife. Explain what, to tell everybody what type of vehicle this is, what we're gonna be doing. Yes, this today. is a 2014 Dodge Charger SXT Plus. Um, we've had this car for uh, several years now. And it's getting about that time. It's just reached 100,000 miles. So it's getting about that time to do a, um, a tune up on it. So today, since we uh, traveling, just like Uncle Tommy said, we're just gonna do a spot correction for one of the cylinders. We had a P305, oh, excuse me, P304, which is for the Dodges, it's a, um, a cylinder malfunction or, um, yeah. So what today is we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the spark plug um, and the ignition coil for it. And hopefully that fixes the problem temporarily until we can get it back to our home and actually do a full um, tune up on it. Okay, this is a, uh, what did we say, this is 2014. So, yeah, we've owned the car for about six years now. Uh, not a lot of customization done to it, do it then as being a V6. Um, I passed it on to my wife because I got more into the uh, car culture and purchased another vehicle. So, and she really wanted this car bad. So what we did is we put our own little touch on it. We added a, a few uh, modifications to the vehicle, uh, tent, uh, wheels, uh, subwoofer, custom lighting, um, which you probably can't see right now, but it's a, a bunch of lighting that I've done myself on it. Um, and really just embracing the car culture as far as like doing modifications, doing mechanic work on our own, instead of just taking it in, you know, actually building that expertise on how to work on vehicles. All right, taking a look around the charger. Boy, I tell you, these things are bad. So what are these 22 inch wheels yes those are 22 inch uh Rivetti wheels um my wife actually picked them out this is what she wanted to go as far as with the theme of the car the theme is a mm -hmm. mini mouse theme mm -hmm. um i helped her design the badging that you see on the car all of the stickers the vinyl um uh, we redid the calipers we redid the rotors put wheel lights on there and just many more little things to make it personalized for her okay all right okay all right so we're gonna get started yeah so the first thing Romel's gonna do is gotta take the intake manifold off and we gotta disconnect the uh, the housing for the, the air uh, filter, which is right here. Now, let me ask you a question. On this one, we pull that intake uh, manifold uh, cover off. Is there a gasket that's under that? Yes, that it is a gasket under there. Mm -hmm. um, but does it they tell you not to reuse it. Yeah. But um, I changed them maybe a year ago. Then you're fine. Yeah, and it should be good. Yeah. So, and this vehicle doesn't get as driven as much as it may look on the screen. Uh -huh. So it's very minimal wear and tear to it. Um, I'll access it more once I actually get the uh, upper intake off and mm -hmm. see where we need to go from there. But in my best guess, especially with working on similar vehicles like this, I mm -hmm. believe they'll be reusable just for this time being. But yes, in the future, I will be replacing those if we have any other major concerns that come up with this vehicle. Okay. All right. Now using 10, a 10 inch to take those off, so right? So right now I'm using ten, a uh, nine, eight millimeter. Eight millimeters, okay. Yeah, eight millimeters to take it off. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty common used uh, socket for these vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, it's nothing crazy that any other um, people out there who have this type of vehicle need to go out and buy any crazy mm -hmm. uh, different types of tools to get these off. They're really easy, mm -hmm. um, at least for this model year, it's really easy to work on at your home. Right. And you don't have to worry about the stressors of going to a dealership as far as uh, getting minor repairs uh, complete. You can do these at home with basic tools like I'm using right here. Mm -hmm. right. So now we gotta get this part of the shroud off. I heard right. pe people still call him the carburetor. Oh, I keep yeah. saying throttle body, throttle right. body. Right. <laughs> so, and it's funny, I used to have a, a 1979 Cadillac. Mm -hmm. And that's actually where I started to learn to do like minor mechanic work, you know, being that it was carbureted, being that it was uh, a little vintage, mm -hmm. so to speak. And uh, yeah, and that's what kind of drew my passion into cars, you know, mm -hmm. just um, being able to be outside or in a garage working on my uh, vehicles. And then once the project was complete, mm -hmm. you know, um, feeling self accomplished. Mm -hmm. So right now I just removed one of the, uh, one of the connectors for this shroud right here. So now we should be able to pull this out. Air mass flow sensor. Yep. Okay. 
Now I'll tell you what, while we got this off, I got some uh, throttling throttle body cleaner. Yes, and we can I was spray actually, it out with. Uh, yeah. planning on doing that when they reach that hundred thousand mile service. Okay, you know, just kind of clean up the gunk from mm -hmm. the throttle body. That yeah, way, we, if you have a problem with your um, your engine taking too long to accelerate, mm -hmm. most of the times, or excuse me, some of the times, mm -hmm. it could be that your throttle body is sticking. And Absolutely. As you can see right here, yeah, you a got a bunch some... of that build up. Yep. From just the you know the uh, air is bringing in and then the um, Absolutely. the oil that's circling around. Yeah, you can. See. So now just removing all the connectors from the throttle body, just uh -huh. give myself more space okay. to actually get to this upper mm -hmm. intake that we were working on. And I believe these bolts, yep. several bolts around there. You got about eight of them. them I think you got about, yeah, you might have a couple of them on the other side too. Uh, this one is actually close to the... Okay. The Make sure you got right. enough light up on there. You can see what you're doing. See, and this is the uh, this is the issue with <laughs> DIY sometimes. Uh -huh. oh, never mind, I got it. <laughs> I was gonna say trying to find the right parts and tools, but uh, yeah. And, so, and especially getting in them real tight spots. Yep. As I didn't deem my hand a few times on some of the hard to reach spaces just mm -hmm. to get the job accomplished. But like I said, the end state of it is. Mm -hmm way more beneficial than, you know, just sitting around pacing at a, a dealership. Right. Get the, wait for your vehicle to be complete. And don't get me wrong, I mean, if you have the ability to and the, um, the money to do it, go ahead by all means, but mm -hmm. I, I, I like that feeling that I've done it myself. And again, mm -hmm. viewers, uh, don't get discouraged. I know you, you see my uncle uh, mm -hmm. have various different types of tools. <laughs> These tools, you can go to your local Harbor Freight. Yeah, that's um, where I got mine from. Uh, AutoZone, any of those auto parts stores, and you won't have to worry about spending, you no, know, hundreds or thousands of dollars on, you know, uh, tools, especially for this type of job. You just like I said, it's still mm -hmm. just basic tools that you'll need yeah. in order to complete like projects like this. Now, when you get into like the engine and transmission uh, rebuilds, then yeah, you'll probably need a little bit more specialty tools. But uh, just remember that AutoZone or Riley, um, I believe Advanced, they all offer a program where you can actually go in there and uh, rent tools. Mm -hmm. So, and I've used it several times. It's helped me with a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very grateful that they offer their services to you know, the public. Yeah, okay, so. All right, so what we left off with is, um, we had to, uh, we're trying to still get this upper intake off, right? Mm -hmm. So with this, uh, this uh, V6, what you have to do in order to get this upper intake off, you see all these bolts that's standing up right now? Mm -hmm. You have to search, I believe it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts mm -hmm. that you have to remove. Oh, excuse me, nine bolts that you have to remove. And then you'll come over to the throttle body side. The throttle body stays in the place on these uh, upper intakes. Mm -hmm. You just have to remove a few of the um, the connectors and some of the valves that's um, housed with the upper intake. And then it's a bracket that you'll see right here that connects to this two studs that's sticking out um, to pull it out, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do, I'm put this last li line or not. <laughs> okay. And then we're just gonna slide it up. Lift it just to move it over out the way. Move okay. it out the way. Yeah, I see the uh, gaskets right there. Yeah. And they're they're individual. Yes. Okay, so, so yeah. like some of them you would think, you know, that they, they'd be you know all connected together, but those right. are individuals. All right. So just removing some of these clips out the there way go. up and I think we should be good to right. yep. just move it out the way. All right, so um, at this point, if I'm working on uh, with the intake off, I usually cover these with some towels. Yes, stuff. sir. Absolutely. But since we're not removing anything in this general mm -hmm. area, because you don't want anything to go down there. Remember, right. it comes from your air box mm -hmm. into your uh, tube up into the throttle body, into the upper intake, mm -hmm. and it pushes down into your engine, right? On this model, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't, you never want to leave these exposed, but like I said, just for this time being, since we're only working on one side of the vehicle, we don't have to worry about any foreign objects getting into them. Mm -hmm. So right now, the, the V6 and the chargers all have these equipped on there, just like a dampener for the um, upper intake box. So I just took that off, removed it. Okay. So now we got all the cylinders visible. So like I said, I had this um, this vehicle uh, codes red and it showed a P0304, which is a cylinder four man function. So being that this is a V6, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. So mm -hmm. this is the one we need to work on right now. And that's what we're about to get started. Okay. Let's move this connector. Makes mm -hmm. it easier when we actually try to pull the ignition coil out. 
There we go, simple as that. Now that's connected, when you move that, was that a little tab on it you push Yes, down? yeah, so most, of, especially the newer um, GM vehicles, they have these little push tabs. They show you how to do is when you put it in, find the tab location, push it down, pull, pull it, it out. out. There you yep. go. And this, this is already seem to be a problem. So these ignition mm -hmm. coils are supposed to be torqued down to 13 foot turns. Now, mm -hmm. I have not removed these initial coils since the ownership of this vehicle. So there could be a reason why the the, the spark plug was um, not uh, igniting. Mm -hmm. So, but we'll figure it out later. We already have the parts, we might as well just change it. So screw is out. Then like I said, all y'all do is kind of twist and pull there and it comes go. straight out. So what I want to up, so it is the problem. So the, I don't know if you can see it on let the camera. See, let me see if I can see. But that little uh -huh. little white spot right there, uh -huh. that's from Arcing. the, the um, spark plug arcing. arcing. Yep. And like I told Deke uh, yesterday when we were discussing this problem, um, I had that assumption that it may have been that. So and like I said, these are 100,000 mile uh, coils. coils and uh, spark plugs. Mm -hmm. So regardless to what, it was going to need to be changed. So. Yeah, you can see the spark plug down in there. Oh, yeah, we definitely see it. So now, mm -hmm. another simple tool that we need to use, mm -hmm. but it's, it's very uh, cheap to get at any part store, is mm -hmm. a spark plug uh, socket. You want to use a spark plug socket, one, because if you know anything about spark plugs, the top mm -hmm. of it is a ceramic type of material that they use along with metal to make it a spark plug. Mm -hmm. Season mechanics forget that certain mm -hmm. spark plugs need to be gapped yeah. to meet the engine specifications. Mm -hmm. So uh, the one that I'll show you in a minute that we're using is usually pre-gap. Mm -hmm. um, typically when I'm at home and I'm doing uh, work like this on any other vehicle, mm -hmm. I always check the gap plugs gap just to make sure, or excuse me, the spark plugs uh, gap to make sure that it's the correct gap to the engine speci specification. And you can find that in the owner's manual um most vehicles so i feel like i got it and i do you got it so and it's like i said how's that tip look on there so let's see it's a little burnt yeah it's not bad it's, it's yeah. not wet it's not wet that's okay. what then that's what we was concerned <laughs> with because if it was yeah. wet then we would probably had a exactly. cylinder issue exactly. and that's something a little bit bigger and then you can just tell like i said this is a hundred thousand mile uh, vehicle mm -hmm. and i want to say that these never been changed in my possession mm -hmm. only because my uh, owner's manual for this vehicle specifies that it needs to be changed at 100,000. And like I said, mm -hmm. coincidentally, we just reached that 100,000 with this vehicle. Uh, was, when you joined the military, you were what now? So when I first joined the military back in 2010, mm -hmm. um, I joined as a utilities equipment uh, repairer, which translates into the civilian side mm -hmm. as AC mechanic. So I am certified on high pressure systems. Mm -hmm. um, in order to get that last certification, which would be the universal one, mm -hmm. that allowed me to work on the low pressure systems as well. So I'm kind of familiar with it um, as far as uh, systems dealing with vehicles and some of the commercial ones, just mm -hmm. because some both of them use some of the same similar uh, mm -hmm. pieces of equipment to make it actually function. Looking at the different spark plugs, so we have the old one and we have a new one right mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. So you can tell the age on the ceramic as far as how long that's been sitting there. And then if we actually look a little bit more, mm -hmm. we can see that this spark right plug there. became a little bit more deformed. That might be Chipping just some of that porcelain. Yeah, of yeah. Or it might just be the dirilection grease or mm -hmm. electric grease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can tell that it has been aging a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if Champion was the, the uh, OEM uh, brand that they use for them, mm -hmm. but uh, doing some research. Uh, when I purchased this uh, spark plug, it's the Bosch Double Iridium for this vehicle. Uh, part number is 96337. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to, anytime I work on anybody's vehicle or I work on my own vehicles, mm -hmm. I try to recommend to the customers that you should always stay with OEM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because you, at least you will know if there wasn't any uh, recalls dealing with that specific part. Right. That the OEM would probably work the best for your vehicle. Now, if you have a modified vehicle, like if you're racing, drifting, dragging, mm -hmm. then of course you can use certain different uh, aftermarket parts mm -hmm. to facilitate your needs. Okay. Right? But to, since this is a V6 and we just use it for traveling most of the time, mm -hmm. um, we, we'll stick to the OEM. And then here I have the new initial coil, which I'll show you. Mm -hmm. So if you remember earlier, I said one of the reasons was that the spark plug had arched right there mm -hmm. on the rubber part and mm -hmm. it probably caused the misfire 
So and as you can see on the newer one, the newer one is on my right hand, mm -hmm. that there's none of those marks there. So we can kind of rule that that probably would cause this to work. Now, some people might be asking like, well, it's just a little bit on the rubber. Could that have, you know, could this be reused? Yes and no, but that's trial and error. So right. I, like I said, this part was very inexpensive. I uh, got this from uh, AutoZone. Um, I think it cost me like 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. So if you can, and if you have, like I said, if you have the funds to do it, I would just replace it entirely. Yeah. All right. So now what we're gonna do first is we're going to- Is that spark plug already pre-gapped? Yes, so this one is pre-gapped, and like I said, if you, I use AutoZone, I've been using AutoZone for the last decade. Mm -hmm. They usually have little notes on there, so mm -hmm. like I said, I always check your gaps. Um, <laughs> I don't have it available at this time, so I'm just mm -hmm. running off trust, but mm -hmm. we're, we're not going too far back home, so when I get back home, I can actually right. uh, do all of the, the uh, spark plugs. I might even just change this into one I'm replacing now, and mm -hmm. in that time, I will actually test each gap on each um, spark plug to, to the recommended setting for mm -hmm. this vehicle. Okay. So, but like I said, for today, we didn't travel that far. We're right. going to uh, just go ahead and replace it and hopefully it holds up for the travel back home. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm adding a uh, uh, dielectric grease to this spark plug because you don't want a dry spark plug mm -hmm. on, on top of the ignition coil because it potentially will cause that arc again. Mm -hmm. So put a little bit on here. I'm gonna put it on the head of this um, spark plug right here, that metal piece right there. Mm -hmm. That's what comes in contact with the uh, ignition coil. Mm -hmm. But you're also gonna put it down around the boot? Yes, around, around the, the boot, boot yeah. Okay. Only reason why I'm putting it on the spark plug now is because it's going back in the socket. And if you can tell that tunnel for the spark plug where it lives, mm -hmm. it's a little bit uh, narrow. So it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to get you know some adult hands up there yeah. in order to uh, put that grease on there. So I'm just gonna add a generous amount. Some say less is more, but never could be too safe. So I'm just gonna add a slight generous amount. That's what I'll call it. <laughs> then we're gonna put this back in the socket. The only thing that we're gonna change at this moment is that we're gonna switch out from our socket wrench to our mm -hmm. uh, to our uh, torque wrench. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why you wanna use a torque wrench is because most, most um, bolts and nuts are set to a certain uh, foot pound or inch pounds. Absolutely. Or, or uh, Newton meters um, to actually be within standard for the uh, mm -hmm. vehicle performance. Okay, so now we're back. Uh, got the new uh, spark plug put into the spark plug socket with some Dura, Dura <laughs> dielectric, <laughs> dielectric <laughs> grease. <laughs> now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an extension with the spark plug socket and the spark plug, put it back into the uh, tunnel. Uh, you wanna start with this hand tight first. So that way you don't drop the spark plug. Like I was explaining earlier about that gap on that spark plugs. If you drop the uh, spark plug down into there, um, it can possibly mess up that gap and cause that misfire to come back. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just hand tightening it to I can feel a little bit more tension and then mm -hmm. I'll grab this uh, torque wrench and torque it to spec. So for this vehicle, so if you have if you have any subscribers or uh, any viewers out there who have um a dodge charger v6 the the torque specifications for your uh spark plugs will be 18 newton meters or um uh, 13 foot pounds mm -hmm. so now i feel that it's nice and tight in there mm -hmm. place it on the socket uh, okay so make sure it's going the right way uh, yeah. <laughs> most definitely so, gonna tighten it you don't have to be too aggressive with these right. uh torque wrenches let it do its magic all right now just your click no Cause I'm very put. All right, yeah. There it goes. Yeah. Yep. I'm just gonna. There's your click. Oh, excuse me. Install the new uh, ignition coil. Mm -hmm. Just like Unc said earlier, I'm gonna add some dielectric grease <laughs> to the boot, <laughs> the bottom of the boot right there. Same thing, reversal. Just gonna stuff that down in there. these real quick mm -hmm. but they don't look that damaged don't look that worn so uh out of this project i think those are maybe the most expensive i think they run around like 120 dollars for just those th uh six uh, grommets really so yeah wow 
Okay. And that's aftermarket or factory. Uh -huh. They all gonna be around that price point. So. What do you put back together first? I'm gonna put all of the hoses and connectors back on that uh -huh. I can't access before I start torquing down the intake manifold. Okay. Just so it's less of a pain once everything is torqued down. I'm moving it out the way for now. So, let me get these two nuts on this side on first since we don't have to use so, them. So if y'all want to know what the delay was, that back nut back there was a bitch. <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> and just make sure these nuts tight to the throttle body of this bracket that holds it in place. Mm -hmm. uh, that should be good. Right there. Okay. Right, making sure we have a fight. We got any connectors or hoses back there. It don't mm -hmm. look like I have, so we're gonna move on up a lot that quick. So this, <laughs> mm -hmm. this little harness bracket right here, just just a little plastic that sticks back there. Okay. Yeah, you should be able to see plastic it. Plastic bracket. Okay, yeah. got it. All right, everything's good. So now we're gonna move into uh, tightening down these, tighten down the intake manifold bolts. Mm -hmm. So people out there was probably, hey Romel, you know, you probably should. Uh, Mm -hmm. Use a torque wrench on that too. Uh, since the torque specs is so low, yeah. we're just going to go tight. We're not yeah. going to over tighten it. We're just going to use feeling. Actually, if you look right here, on uh, it'll tell you. Body, but I'm not gonna spray in it, right? And then I'm gonna take a little bit, put it on the towel. Mm -hmm. That way we can actually get that little scene mm -hmm. and get all well, the Well, you know it won't do nothing to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see, yeah, but you got that gunk off there, though. Yeah. You definitely got that. Yeah. I'm gonna clean this down up in there. So you push that back. Watch your fingers with that. Yep. So just kind of clean it. At the bottom, this just helps so that the throttle body doesn't stick because of all the grime that exactly. built up over the years. Exactly, and so. the th that that stuff that sits on them throttle bodies will make them stick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So luckily, it kind of broke off pretty easily. So, mm -hmm. like I said, we try to maintain this vehicle as much. Okay. Back on. There, this just pushes on. Mm -hmm. Before I start connecting anything. Let me get the map sensor and stuff back on first. Uh -huh. Just make sure, let me see. Okay, so let's go to the throttle body. Uh, yep. yep. That's it, yep. Get the lock in place. There we go. There we go. Got past 50. When, uh, we got past 50. That's when it started yeah. thumping and shaking. Yeah, it okay. started thumping and shaking. Like any mm -hmm. cruising or sea uh, mm -hmm. speeds, it would be okay. Mm -hmm. And then originally it started with the uh, with the uh, light flashing, the engine check engine light flashing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had her stop because I was um, wasn't traveling the same vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, I had her stop and went to a local auto zone in the area that she could find and. Of course, they bust the, uh, they brought out the cold reader and the cold reader told her mm -hmm. the cold and it ended up being a mess. So, so, so a service engine light did come on? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for a check engine light? Yeah, check engine light. Um, typically, if it's flashing, it has something to do with that. Uh, oh, yeah. Mid so, so, it was flashing? Yes. Okay. So, it would flash, and then on this model, it would ding and make okay. all the little noises that you needed. Uh, all right, guys. I think my nephew is. Got it all, everything yep. put back together. Yep. He gonna give it a start up, check the uh, code readings on it, yep. and see what we got here. Let's put the top back on there. Get that out of the way. 
You did the top two, didn't you? Yeah, it was one of our earlier projects. <laughs> we gotta redo it again. You know, my wife went through a lot of revisions on what she, what she, what she wanted. Yeah, so we it was bad. Well, it's, yeah. Huh. It was like my, I think my third time dealing with paint. So mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna uh, redo it again. And, uh, and you gotta remember something too. It's, it's not being seen. Yeah. Unless the, uh, unless the mechanic look up under the hood. Right. But that looks, I, I'm telling you, man. I'm, hey, look here. Uh, viewers on my channel, you guys take a look at this at, at, at his at his engine cover here, and uh, leave in the comment below on what you think about it. Okay, he did it himself. I think yeah. he did a great job. Yeah, don't hurt me up too much in the yeah. comments. Yeah, <laughs> but we're gonna definitely revise it. And, got, and, and remember, it. remember, he's military now. <laughs> he's serving the country. Okay, <laughs> so hold on. Also, uh, just to be we're about to start it up, but I don't really recommend codes or uh, clearing if you haven't fixed the problem yet, only because that's just gonna make the issue more severe. So, I know everybody like to see the Christmas tree on their uh, dash, what they call it. So, I, wouldn't, I don't recommend clearing codes unless it's something minor that you know what's causing the problem, you can easily fix it. Mm -hmm. But uh, since me and Hunk fixed it, we're gonna clear the codes now. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. You guys, that, that was a fast crank up. And that's a smooth run. And I don't feel any kind of miss. So forth. I don't feel any kind of miss. That was a fast crank up. So the throttle body is opening. Yep. There you go. And he cleared the codes, right? Yes, I cleared the codes. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. All right, so, so that, that completes the job, guys. Um, I mean, hopefully I'm gonna go do a test run on it, make sure that everything is um, functioning properly. Um, if we do have any other issues, uh, especially if that engine light comes back, I'll come back to Unc. He's gonna, um, we'll test the code and see what it was. Mm -hmm. um, if you like these type of videos, make sure you subscribe. Uh, go ahead, plug yourself on. DTV59. DTV59, mm -hmm. and then you can also follow me at uh, Spartan B392, Spartan B underscore 392 on Instagram. Come check me out. I do a lot of these things on my channel as well. And hopefully, I can do some more collabs with Uncle in the future. All right. All right. Y'all seen it? If you like this video, hey, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Y'all know, hit that notification bell. Y'all, I need your help. I really do. I want to thank my nephew for coming down. He came out from Kansas. Remember, he's a serviceman, okay? And and uh, he's, uh, he's, he, he, he's doing his thing. He's a family man. He's a good young man, okay? All right? A lot of, a lot, a lot, especially a lot of black young men get a lot of, you know, y'all know how it is, you know? But the thing about it is, when you got some that are doing great things, you got to acknowledge it, you know? And you are. You you are a man. You, and you're what a man's supposed to be. You're what a man's supposed to be. So, but like I say, yeah, you like it, you know, hey, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Craig down in uh, Oklahoma, love you, buddy. See you guys next time. Have a good evening. Y'all have a wonderful holiday weekend.